finished uh, forgiveness more or less according to the foundation laid down and uh, and we will we will no i have to no i'm not getting the full face only my nose is come oh why is it okay let's see. that we will continue talking about forgiveness for the whole time here with you because forgiveness is is not as i said we have to overcome the the what we thought forgiveness was and move on to to the to the real aspect of forgiveness that i am trying to to bring into you and so uh, i told you that god never forgives never forgives and so it is difficult for us to to get because we are born or got into the old christian tradition that we because we sinned and god is saying oh my gosh you know and then we say but god is good i he say he forgives me so i can keep on sinning and sinning and sinning but god never never forgives one of the reasons why god never forgives is first of all God doesn't know what is sin. Get that into your head. <laughs> Because if he knew what he wa- what was sin, then he would be a bad god. The one who knows what is sin cannot be a good person. So God doesn't know what is sin because he's so pure. He's so pure. He's so innocent. so innocent does uh, a baby know anything about anything except being innocent does a baby know that there's a there's a a murderer coming to to stab it does a baby know that uh, on the day that she is going to be born she'll be aborted and abortion etc does a baby know it doesn't know in the same way god is perfectly innocent he knows nothing about evil it will take some time for you to to digest it because when we say that god forgives the other part of it the other spy, uh, side of the coin is if god forgives he knows what is evil and therefore if he knows what is evil he can also create evil he can also so we get into a whole lot so forgiveness according according to 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 scripture according god forgives which means he looks at us as always like himself if god looks at us god looks at himself and he sees radiant innocence and he sees the reflection of that innocence 1 2 3 4 5 you only see evil in others because you have it in yourself so as you begin to diminish the the weight of evil that each of us is carrying and that becomes less and less and less you will begin to to appreciate your own innocence that was waiting to flower and you and you see the reflection of your innocence in others and that is forgiveness when at last you are able to say i see no evil in anyone except that they are struggling with what is going on in their lives and if they could do if they could do their lives without being evil they would do it wouldn't you do your life without doing anything bad if you could help it Do you really purposely want to do something bad? Do you really really really? Ah. And yet we are very very uh, quick to put evil on others. Boom 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 boom. But that's why Jesus says those who have no sin no sin cast the first stone. So that is about forgiveness just um uh, touching it before we go to the new lesson the ocean wave 
So we begin with this. If you look at the sun, the sun has got enough sunbeams. So here you have the sun. And the sun has sunbeams. Big ones, small ones. And if you look at it, you'll ask the question, where does the sun end and the sunbeam begin? Where does the sunbeam end and the sun begin? So the sunbeam is here. Where does it end and where does the sunbeam begin? Where does the sun end and where does the sunbeam begin? Nowhere. The sunbeam is an extension of the sun. So there is nowhere where the sunbeam, uh, the sun ends and the sunbeam begins. There, you can't find that point where the sunbeam begins. And so we are talking of the ocean wave. So here you have the ocean. And on the ocean there are trillions and trillions of waves. Where does the ocean end and the wave begin? The ocean and the wave are one. The sunbeam and the sun are one. Where do you end and God begin? Where does God end and you begin? Try to get that. Where do I end and God begins? So God and you are? There is nowhere where God ends and there is nowhere where you begin. No. There is because just as there is no place, joint between the wave and the ocean and there is no joint between uh, the sunbeam and the sun and there is no joint and that is why Jesus came and he told us, you know what he told us? I am the wine and you are the branches. Where does the wine end and the branch begin? And that is the intimacy of God with us. That's the way this lesson is called the ocean wave. We are the waves of the ocean and the wave has never been separated from the ocean. It is impossible for the wave to be separated from the ocean. It is impossible for the sunbeam to be separate from the sun. It is impossible for the wine to be separate from the branches. It is impossible for you to be separate from God. Impossible! Impossible! You can dream that it is possible. You can dream that your sins have broken you away from God, taken you away from His mercy and you can cry and do everything and do penance and go to, to Lourdes and go on. But at no time and in no circumstances and no matter what you do, just as the wave and the sunbeam cannot be separated, you have never been separated from your source, which is your creator. Never. Never. And take it a little further. If you have never been separated from the source, now you can enjoy life by telling yourself, you know what, I can never be separated from God. He and I are one. You can never be separated from God. Never. So. And God reminds us of this over and over and over again. So, what gives God the greatest joy? What gives, what fills God with joy? I'm not saying happiness, I'm saying joy. Joy and happiness are two different. What gives God joy? So 
Well, you have the sun, and you have the, uh, the wave, and you have uh, the ocean, and you have the wave. You have the wine, and you have the branches. You, you have God, and you have you. <coughs> so, if the sun and the sunbeam are not separate, the sunbeam and the sun are one. So it makes no difference for the sun to be a sunbeam or to be be the sun. It makes no difference. It makes no difference for the what difference does it make to the ocean if it becomes a wave? It still remains an ocean and yet it becomes a wave. Ocean and wave. No difference. What happens to the to the wine if the branches are removed? It still remains a wine. And so, my dear friends, the greater joy that God can have is to become you. To become you. To become you. And this is shown to us that when the Son of God became flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. God became man, just as the sun becomes the sunbeam and the ocean becomes the wave and there is no difference. So God became man and he sees no difference between himself and us. Otherwise he would not become man. Say, me become man? No. He became man because he sees no difference between him and himself. So God loves to be become a human being. He loves to be you. He loves to be me. So now take, a, take the same lesson again. So now what is there to forgive? God loves to be me. <clears throat> so what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is to understand that God loves to be me. In that you you forgive yourself for everything. God loves to be me. Now the what we are going through all this lesson is, do you have? Just as God has a desire to be you, and he he, to, he became Jesus. Do you have a desire to become? To become like your father. To become like your source. Do you, or are you ready to remain like a wave till the end of time? Because even if you are ready to be with a wave, you cannot be. As time goes, you have to be one with the ocean. One with the ocean. So, second thing is, what gives God, what gives joy to God? To keep us with Him. And uh, Jesus says in His last prayer, O oh, Father, you have all those you have given to me, I, I bring them and I give them to you. They have been with me right from the time and I have been with them and I bring them to you. So, to keep us with Him, not one of, of my sheep must be lost. Not one must be lost. The greatest joy of God is that nobody is lost. The greatest joy of the ocean is that no, suddenly a wave does not cut it off and goes away. The ocean is, a hey, part of me is gone. No, it is insanity. It cannot happen. So, God doesn't want any one of us to be lost. I am the good shepherd and I, uh, if, if a one sheep is lost, I will go and I will get it. Why? Because that sheep is a part of me. I cannot allow a part of me to be cut off and go. I cannot allow that. So, we have that to keep us with Him. So, I came that you may have life and life in abundance. The joy of God is that you should be jumping with joy. That Ricky should be jumping and doing the Filipino dance. <laughs> that, that, all, that all of us really should be dancing with joy that we may have life and life in abundance, there are no two ways about it. And where are you going? <laughs> oh my gosh. See this. The two, to have
have life and life in abundance. Uh, we was, we, you were there, so we were, I was sitting down on my bench as usual after a long time. And there was a little girl on that window there shouting and singing a song. You know what? For me. <laughs> really, it was so cute. And she, she, I do not know to whom she was, but she was like a little bird. Maybe she, I think she might be eight years old or something, singing loudly right from that window to me there. And then I looked at her and I waved her and she waved back and she called her sister and she went on the other window. Both of them said, but it was such a joyful performance to give us life and life in abundance. <clears throat> so, are we therefore born to be poor? Are we therefore born to, to, to be hungry? Are we therefore born to be thirsty? Are we born for that? Are we born for that? Did God create us for that? I came that you may have life and life in abundance. And so when we don't have life in abundance and we are full of sorrow and dread and fear and anxiety, it is not because God gave it to us. Even when, uh, before I started my own spiritual life in the depth, I have to blame God for everything. And so many people, say they blame us. They blame God for everything. Why did, should this happen to me? What wrong did I do? Why is God punishing me? Poor God. <laughs> Poor God. Because He says, I, I made you so that you'll enjoy life. We, uh, we learn in the, in the CCD classes, when in the first grade or second grade, why did God make you? To be happy forever. Not to be unhappy even for one moment. God did not create it us for unhappiness. He created us for abundance, not only of wealth, abundance of joy, abundance of health, abundance of friendship, abundance of love, abundance of, of toleration, abundance of hospitality, abundance, abundance, abundance. He only created us for that. And then we then make, make the whole, uh, whole change in our lives by not by not accepting the abundance that comes to us. And the fourth one is, why? what gives joy to God? To go on the cross and die for us. So can you believe that the crucifixion of, 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 of Jesus was the happiest day of his life? The happiest day of his life was when he was on the cross. At that moment, what did he say? It is fulfilled. Nobody remembers those words. The seven last words of Jesus, they are so beautiful. And he says, when his life is going and all, with joy he says, Father, it's done. I'm coming now. It's done. And so, that gives joy to God. So, any questions so far? This is that's the opening of this lesson. What gave joy to God? Okay, so the wave and the sunbeam are one is here and the whole planet of three billion people are individualized forms of God. So if they are all individualized forms of God, which means the wave is an individualized form of the ocean. The sunbeam is an individualized form of the sun and so on we can go forth and every human being is an individualized form of God. And so how much respect, dignity, devotion should we have for a human being? 
how much is so let us not enter into political correctness but let us enter into into uh, an awareness and an enlightened mind spirit and body that begins to experience the other as the presence of god to experience the other as a presence of god and if that is true to to experience the other as an individualized form of god can you therefore imagine if two individualized form of god get married how much respect and love and uh, dignity and devotion should be there between two individualized forms of god and yet so many marriages have never understood that at all at all at all it's like the partner male or female who cares the partner sees a reflection of god in the other and the other sees the reflection of god in the other and in this 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 is now a love called the marriage is not founded on this then it very soon becomes a marriage of toleration okay the honeymoon is over now let's tolerate each other till the rest of our lives okay now we have got children let's keep on the show of being mother and mom and dad okay it's four children okay but the moment they go to college they go to college then you go your way i go my way but we will will be polite to each other okay but now the days are over and so many couples are there living out the agony of a non divine love and that is why the catholic church says there should be no divorce because it knows that it is a it is a coming together of two aspects of the same divinity and the church says i cannot break that break that but then because of because of hardness of heart and all we have the annulments and this and all okay let's let's another time. i just brought this out to show you that uh, that real real matrimony is this divine love between the wave and the ocean the sunbeam and the sun okay so you and i let us take again the sun beam and the wave are the, the form of the sun the wave is the form of the ocean and so the human is the form of the divine greatest hurt that we have done it is like you know the crazy man becomes uh, anx- and gets full of anxiety gets full of uh, self loathing loses his self esteem has no other self worth and doesn't care what happens to to himself because he has no he has lost respect he's lost dignity he's lost everyone so what does he do what does he do i'm not that i'm not that i'm not that i am not so he he or she fills the whole life by saying i am not that which god has created me to be i am not what god has created me to be 
I am not that, I am not that, I am not that. And these people, my dear friends, are the people who, who do the most forms of evil in this world. Evil doesn't come from a happy person. Evil doesn't come from a good person. Evil doesn't come from a, from a person who has tremendous peace. Evil comes from someone who has no peace and so bashes somebody else. Evil comes from that who doesn't know what is love. And the moment somebody shows love, they kick that person and say, you're, you're fake, you're this, you're that. They can't, they can't accept anything, anything, because they have been hurting themselves. And you and I have been hitting ourselves, beating ourselves, so as not to, to consider ourselves this. We have beaten ourselves to such an extent that we have broken ourselves and not <clears throat> being able to see in the brokenness that we have imposed upon ourselves the divinity, all that is divine, all that is beautiful, all that is holy, we fail to see in ourselves. And if again coming to the form of forgiveness, if there is a forgiveness, sit down today and for the next week and forgive yourself. Repeat to yourself over and over again, I am the sunbeam of the sun. I am the wave of the ocean. I am the form of, I am a human form of God's divinity. And I will be that. I will have patience with myself. I will begin to, re I who have destroyed myself, I am going to rebuild a new being. And once you make that decision, and once you have that desire, then God Himself comes with immense grace to help you on your way. So, actually this name, the name of this lesson is desire. Desire. It is not the ocean wave. The ocean wave just a description. So desire is the name of this lesson. So if we are like that, so from where does the sun, where, from where does the wave start? So here you have the wave and the wave starts from somewhere deep in the ocean and then it comes up and then it goes back into the depths of the ocean. But it has never left the ocean. So if this is God and you are the wave, from where did you start? You started from the mind and the heart of God. Just as a wave begins from the depth of the ocean, we began trillions of years ago, if you can give some time to that, in the mind of God. And as the wave comes out, does the wave leave the ocean? And so, my dear friends, you have never left the mind of God. You are still there. But if you want to believe some crazy thing, that you have left the mind of God, that you are different from Him, that you are separate from Him, so be it, you want to suffer, I have no problem. So, you have always been in the mind of God. Always, always, always you have never left so what what are you so you can therefore you can say i am a i am a thought in the mind of god you are a thought in the mind of god you are a thought 
in the mind of God. You are a thought, you are a thought, you are a thought, you are a thought, you are a thought. We are all thoughts in the mind of God. Never left Him, can never leave Him, and, we, and He never leaves us. And that is why uh, throughout this course, I repeat over and over again, the Father and you are one. No two ways about it. The Father has never left you, He cannot leave you, and He will never leave you. Second paragraph. The waves enjoy expressing the and each thought of God is an individual thought of God, an individual, individual, individual. And each individual thought of God enjoys expressing its individuality. So you express it, I express it. All, all, all the thoughts of God that we are are expressing a unique individuality. So each one of us is an infinite field of expression. The body that you have right now is just one form of your correct, current expression. So the body is one form in which you express yourself. But you can express yourself in so many forms. You can express yourself by going to the computer and creating something. You can express yourself by the work that you do. You can express yourself by being a, by being a grandmom can express yourself by being a woman on the street. You can express yourself by being a Catholic priest. You can express yourself. So all of us are the thoughts in the mind of God expressing ourselves to the best that we can. And here again comes forgiveness. Forgiveness is to, to be able to see she's expressing herself. She's a thought of God expressing herself in this way. Who am I to judge? She is a thought of God expressing herself in that way. He is a thought of God expressing himself and I am a thought of God. So we all have the, the capacity and the God-given dignity to express ourselves as we think best. And so let us keep on expressing ourselves because in expressing ourselves we give glory to God. Okay. But yet... If we, if we begin to express ourselves and yet, and yet, we have been given the choice to perceive, the choice to perceive. So Alison here has been given the choice to perceive herself as a newly married woman. One year now for your marriage? As a, yeah, one year. So she can. So she perceives herself as a woman who has been married for one year, and so can perceive. Somebody else can perceive themselves as as a, as a poor poor man. Somebody else can perceive themselves as wanting and needing a lot of things. Somebody else can perceive themselves as sick and unhealthy. Somebody else. So we choose how to perceive ourselves. You, all of us here have chosen how to perceive ourselves. And you know what? We can change it. That's the beauty of it. There is no such thing as karma. There is anything that we choose to perceive of myself and I can choose to perceive Ricky as uh, a Filipino who goes five months and enjoys his life over there. <laughs> or I can choose to perceive him as a happily married person and has nice children. The, per the perception is all that. And so each of us, I think it is time today, after the class, before you sleep, or till tomorrow, or till you come back for the next class, ask yourself, how do I perceive myself? And be honest. Because once you you are aware of how you perceive yourself, 
you can change it. But if you are not aware of how you perceive yourself, you cannot change it. You cannot change it. And I don't want you to simply change it or see only the, see, see everything. See the positive, see the negative, see the dark, see the light, see the colorful, see the beauty, see, see the ugliness, see all that without judging and forgiving everything and say, I have played with this for too long and now I drop this teddy bear. I played with this for too long, now I hate vanilla ice cream. I've dr I had enough of vanilla ice cream, I'm tired of that. And so we move on. But unless you are aware that you are, you are tired of vanilla ice cream, you'll never drop it because you don't want to taste something else. Just cashew ice cream, have you ever tasted it? No, because I'm stuck with vanilla. Okay. <laughs> so be stuck. Or rare, let's say now, I, I, I don't want to be stuck. So make an inventory of how you perceive yourself. So that's another spiritual exercise. The more you, the deeper you go and you, you begin to see yourself, the more satisfied you are. Because there is so much of, of misperceptions, there is so much of unwanted perception that not only is our own, but we have accepted the misperceptions of others and made it our own. I have taken the, the misperception of my mom and dad and made it my own for so many years. I have taken the misperception of my teacher. There was, there was one teacher who, and I carried that misperception for so long. One teacher in the 7th grade, 8th grade, 9th grade, his name was Andrew. He perceived me and he called me for the three years that I was under him. Only one, he didn't call me Nelson. He called me Rascal. <laughs> Rascal, okay, have you got an answer to that? Yeah. Rascal, so I was, the, I was uh, until I, for quite a few years, maybe three or four years, I thought of myself as a rascal because he was, he was a great teacher. Everybody liked him, etc., etc. And if he called me a rascal, you know what? I must be a rascal. So many of us, we do that. We take perceptions of others, make it our own, because we give them so much of, I gave that Mr. Andrew so much of, that he he's a clever guy, he's intelligent, he's this, he's that. I'm only in the seventh grade, so he's a teacher. So ask yourself what perceptions you have taken from others. I think 90% 90, 90 of the perceptions that we have about ourselves are, are from others. And so it's time therefore to say, I am here to accept only the perception God has of me. All the others are meaningless. I thereby drop it. Then you, and that is the height of prayer. I told you, stop praying. These are, I'm going to teach you different types of prayer. These are the height of prayer. It's saying, oh God, let me see myself as you see me. Just be there. Heavenly Father, let me, that I may see myself as you see me. Heavenly Father, I have seen myself as my mom told me, my brother told me, my sister told me, the pastor told me, the one body in confession told me, etc. All that I have taken, but I have never asked you. Today, I humbly bow before you and I ask you, how do you perceive me? And if you do it very honestly, you will find his arms going around you and his lips coming to the bottom of your neck and you and he being one as he reveals what he believes of you to you. Wow. Why are we such idiots not accepting God's perception but accepting every donkey's perception of us <laughs> and saying no. And <laughs> Is that God? Eileen. Eileen. I am very busy. Bye. Hello. Bye.
Okay, bye, bye. My sister from oh. India. Oh. <laughs> so, this is what, what we are talking about to, to get God's perception of who you are, accepting that perception and, and re being in that. You, you, and it's a beautiful exercise. You feel so good at the end of it. And uh, you, you know, your mind will not change or this will not change. But uh, you know, the, the changes that come in these classes that you are going are, are, uh, are unobservable and unnoticeable. But it happens. All the changes that, uh, yes. Father, what about when, I understand what you're saying about how we perceive ourselves, but how about when we want to project something else to others? So when we spend our lives trying to pretend we're so perfect to everybody else, yeah, right? Uh, how about that? That That's another fake thing. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, it's very fake. So, yeah, right. so there is no, there is no. Uh, so why do you, why do you project yourself as somebody who you, who you're not? Mm -hmm. You know why? Because you don't like your real self. So you're showing them another self. See, I like this self, <laughs> but don't, don't come closer because you'll see the real me. And I don't want you to see the real me because I can't see it myself. And so begin to love yourself. Once you ask God, show me how you see, how is it you see me? Because you cannot show God a fake self. He sees you as you are. And accept that. And in accepting that, you will be able to say, if God perceives me like this, and He accepts me like this, so let the whole world see me as God sees me. Let the whole world see me as God sees me. And in that, the change will come to the other person. The change will come to the other person because there is nothing that can move the vibrations of being in another being than the truth that you give to them. And the truth will set not only you free, but all those around you. And we are, are therefore, by, by showing our fake selves to each other, are imprisoning our brothers and sisters to the fakeness in our lives. So, be a, be a beautiful person and the greatest gift that you can give to anyone is your honest, true self. The self which you believe that God perceives you. God perceives me as this, I'm not going to change it. Let it be. With that you march in the world with so much confidence, with so, so much, you know, uh, how much of our lives is burdened with that? What will others think about me? <laughs> so much. So we do so many things with that thing. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm going for a wedding party, so I must put uh, this uh, and I have to put this and I have to put that and I have to put that. You know why? Because if I don't put this, what will others think about me? So you do everything. You dress yourself for, the, for four hours, pedicure, manicure, hairicure, nosy cure, <laughs> ear cure, everything cured and all. And then you go. So for what? Five, six hours so you do all that. For what? Rather you, you just say, this is the way God perceives me and I love, what, and God loves what He perceives, no matter, I am going. Who was, the, for me, who was the most beautiful person in the world? Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, I met her so often, you could, you could uh, smell the beauty of that shrunken, wrinkled old lady. There was a beauty in it. She didn't have to put manicure, pedicure, nothing, nothing, nothing. She didn't even, I guess, I, I don't know if she knew the meaning of it at all. So, be as exactly as God created you to be. You can choose a thought. You can choose a thought to perceive yourself as alone and separate. Or you can choose to perceive yourself as one with, with the Father, 
and with the whole human race. You can choose. Who's stopping you? I don't know. Who's stopping me from being one with the whole human race? Who's stopping me? Nobody. Nobody. I'll tell you just a, just a yeah, amusing thing. Today, today is Wednesday? Yes. Yeah, today is Wednesday. So I go to Skyview to say Mass. Today we had another lady. She was absent for the last three, four months. She had gone somewhere and now she came. And she prepared the whole altar and all so that I could say the Mass. Except one thing. She forgot to bring my clothes. <laughs> so I kept quiet. I asked her, uh, where, where are my vestments? She said, be there. So I went to that there and there was two other ladies sitting down behind the door and my vestment was there. So I said, hi, good morning, how are you? Yeah, what's your name? This, uh, that. And then as soon as I came, this lady, beautiful lady, I'm so sorry, Father, I should have kept your clothes out. I said, no, I said, God wanted me. What, what did he want you? He wanted me to go and smile at these two ladies. That is why you forgot to keep my vestments out. That's a nice way to see it. I said, that's the way I see it. So, that's it. The choice is always yours. You can say, oh my God, now she prepared everything. She doesn't know that I have to wait. Am I going to say mass with this? And I could have made life miserable for her. <laughs> and she would have been miserable. And she was heading towards being miserable because she had done a mistake. You can change water into wine. When they hello, how are you? And so, so often, so often, uh, once you get that, that we are here to, to, to choose. The choice is mine. I can choose to be angry and nasty. I can choose to be disappointed. I can choose. I can choose. But then, who suffers? I and I alone. And here, if I choose to, to, to see all that is good, holy and beautiful, who enjoys? So why hate yourself and give yourself a bad time rather than love yourself and say, I'm going to enjoy life from henceforward without, without running my life to, to please others, running my life to the dictations of others, running my life to... It doesn't help at all. It doesn't help at all. It makes us very, very uh, fake. Uh, you, 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 you sit down there on, on the bench as I'm going to sit down now till, till the summer is there and I watch the people uh, and as, as the people pass and I'm sitting quietly as they pass with a dog or something and if you're sensitive enough you get the vibrations you get the energy level and you, you it touches you who are just sitting down there, sensitive to, to the beings that are going. And then a being goes, and then you say, this one has a lot of negativity. I offer her my positivity. She goes. Somebody else comes, my gosh, this is full of, full of uh, joy and full of this. I look at her, or look at him. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, good. And so, we exchange energies and uh, we give. We, uh, we are people who, who are called to give the energy of life and energy of came that they may have life and life in abundance to those who don't have it and for those who have it, we take it ourselves. And uh, the, the joy that I felt when that seven-year-old girl was singing loudly, I, can, I think I'll have a good sleep tonight. <laughs> so this is, this is what is uh, you know living a spiritual life from from inside where I could have said what the, what the hell is she making such a big noise on us she's a show off she's seven years and she's trying to show off to all the boys <laughs> for what <laughs> correct no it doesn't doesn't help at all so any questions so far
So, and this, my dear friends, is what what I call a valuable use of. You're free to make a mess of your life or you're free to make your life beautiful and fantastic. You are free, the freedom. So let us, let us also go to this. If at this moment I'm having an unhappy life, let us stop blaming, blaming every, everybody out and tell yourself somewhere I did not make a free decision. I was caught up with my own, own uh, physical nature. I was caught up with my own emotional background. I was caught up. I was caught up. I was caught up, and therefore I did not make. Now that I am sensing myself a little more free, I can change that decision. But now I am free, and remain in this freedom. You know, remain. You know, Jesus says. Remain in my love, which <laughs> beautiful saying, remain in my love, just as I remain with the Father and the Father remains in me. We are called to remain. Where, where are you right now? In the mind of God. Have you ever left the mind of God? No. Can you ever leave the mind of God? No. So why make a mess of your life and, and perceive yourself to be outside the mind of God? And so I leave you with this. You are the wave of the ocean. You are the sunbeam of the sun. You are the divine in the form of human being. Good night. Thank you, Thank Father. You. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you.